Welcome to this AE Connects roundtable. I've got four women that were a blast to watch when they competed in the America East Conference, and each of the four hoping to compete in the 2020 Olympics, which now is 2021 uh, Olympics and Paralympics. And obviously, this is the first Olympics that uh, was canceled or postponed due to something other than a world war. So definitely part of some history um, for you know right or wrong. But hopefully, you guys are all looking ahead to 2021 now. Uh, and I'd like to just introduce everyone. So I'll start. Uh, with the first person on the top of my screen, Emily Escobedo. Hi, Emily. Hi, uh, my name's Emily. I went to UMBC um, and I swim breaststroke. So I'm a swimmer and breaststroke is my main event, the 200 and the 100. All right, I see Grace Claxton. Hi, Grace. Hello, Grace Claxton from the University at Albany of State New York. I do track and field. Uh, my event is the 400 hurdles. And Noelle Lambert. Hi, Noelle. Hey, my name is Noelle Lambert. Um, I'm currently living in New Hampshire right now. I went to UMass Lowell and I was hoping to do the, hoping to qualify for the 100 meter dash for track and field. Last but not least, Ellie Purrier. Hi, Ellie. Hey, how's it going? Um, I, my name's Ellie Purrier and I went to University of New Hampshire. I'm now training in Boston for New Balance, and I'm hoping to um, qualify in the 1500 or the 5K. All right. Thank you all for joining me. I'm, I'm excited to, to get going and kind of get your, I guess, initial reactions to the, the Olympics being canceled. So we'll start there. Um, you know, obviously the, the news with, with COVID-19 kind of canceling all sports, the Olympics eventually were that next uh, major sporting event, and that's putting it lightly, I guess, to fall. Uh, so I'll go to uh, Grace first. Grace, what were just your, your reactions? You've been to the Olympics before, and we'll touch on that in a little bit, but what was just your, your reaction to uh, the canceling or postponement of these games? I mean, before it was officially postponed, it was just like the uncertainty, like back and forth rumors going around, the possibility of it being postponed how long, like, how far is going to be postponed for. And it's like um, we stopped, like, we weren't allowed to go on track to certain facilities, the gym. So it was just, at first, I mean, it's still a little unmotivating um, knowing that everything has been, you know, drastically um, paused. And, um, yeah, I mean, I was – it was hard. It was really tough the day that I found out it was officially postponed. And, um, I mean, now it's, you know, we just train in. Um, everything was, we used to train like five to six days a week. Now we only train like three times a week. Um, it's just to maintain and stay fit. Um, it's still a little tough because we can't be out that much, but um, our coach just still has a, going to like certain fields, um, keeping our social distance. It, it's different now. I'll send it to the, the other runner uh, next, Ellie. What, what were your thoughts and uh, I guess how does this affect your training? Yeah, um, I think similar to what Grace just said, um, like uncertainty was what was really like bothering me the most before, but I feel like I kept thinking it's for the better if it does get postponed. Um, and, like, I, I just kind of, like, had that in the back of my head, but I didn't, like, think too hard about it until it actually happened. And then when the announcement came, like, I was like, okay, like, like it hit me, and it was kind of, you know, like, more upsetting than I expected it to be. Um, but also, like, you know, I knew it was the right decision, and so I wasn't, like, you know, like, devastated. It was just, like, weird to kind of – try to wrap your head around something that you've been training for for four years being in a few months and now postponed for a whole year. Um, you know, so now I've just been, you know, doing the whole quarantine, social distancing, staying home in Vermont. Um, we haven't been practicing together. So that's been the hardest part right now. Um, it's just getting in like a lot of miles still like, um, by myself mostly or with my dog, <laughs> but, um, my coach hasn't really, told us like a long-term plan like we're hoping there's some meets salvaged this fall so we're kind of thinking of just doing base training for now and preparing for those 
Emily, for you, it must be a little bit more difficult because you need a pool. Yeah, um, I, I agree with both of them on what they were talking about. I think um, for all athletes, no matter if you've been to the Olympics or haven't been to the Olympics yet, I think it was um, there were a lot of emotions. You know, you don't want to be too down about it because you know it's the right decision, which it totally is. Um, but it's still like the Olympics is always that one constant. Every four years or every two years it happens. Um, and it's always that constant since before we were born. So I think um, the postponement kind of let me into the gravity of the situation. Like you can kind of hear what the news are saying, but um, the fact that they actually canceled the, or postponed the biggest event in probably the world um, definitely let me know the gravity of the situation. Um, right now I'm just trying to stay positive, trying to stay active. It's kind of hard when you have nowhere to go. Um, and unlike these ladies, I cannot run, nor do I enjoy running. So that's kind of <laughs> off the table. Um, all the pools in the area are closed. I was actually um, at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado um, when all of this kind of started happening a few weeks back. And we were safe there for a little bit. We were like, I was supposed to leave. And then I said, you know what, let me stay as long as possible. Um, and it was really stressful being there um, because you just kind of didn't know what would happen. We didn't know any time like a – of somebody of importance walked on the pool deck all of us were our like our hearts went to our stomachs like are we kicked out is this it are we going to be you know do we have to leave do we have to drive home our flights canceled what's happening um and so they eventually shut down the training center in colorado on a wednesday and we had to be out that next day so it was very minimal um like preparation and time um but since i got back um the pools have been closed but i actually I've been pretty lucky. I work at a company called Swim Labs. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them. They're like around the country and they have infinity pools, which is basically, I don't know if you guys know what those are, but um, it's like an oversized bathtub, jacuzzi, and there's like jets pushing. So you can kind of swim in place. It's essentially like a treadmill for the water. Um, and even though they're closed, the managers and the owners have been really nice and have been letting me kind of come in and swim um, as much as I want. I mean, it's not ideal situation, but it's definitely better than nothing. Um, I know other national team members are kind of the ones that live in California and Florida are swimming in the ocean, which is a huge adjustment if you're not like a open water swimmer. It's just like insane. But um, I think everyone's kind of trying to do whatever they can just to stay active and stay fit and stay positive. And Noel, for you, a little bit of a unique scenario because you played women's lacrosse in college. Uh, so now that you set your sights on the Paralympics, uh, how does that affect your training in terms of obviously having to stay focused now for another year as you look ahead to the summer of 2021. Yeah, I mean, I've only been uh, doing track and field for about 10 months. So, I mean, I think this is actually beneficial for me just because I can spend that extra year just getting better every, any way I could. Obviously, it was still just frustrating just because, I mean, all these athletes who have been training for four years have had their heart and hopes set on 2020. Um, for me, it's, I've been lucky enough is, that is actually closest to me, hasn't uh, officially closed yet. Um, so I've been going there until, I mean, so who knows, maybe next week I'll be getting kicked out, but I've just honestly been doing anything I can, getting very creative with all my workouts, uh, at home. Um, just my coaches and everybody, they've been just, uh, great of giving me workouts, giving me things to do, just keep myself busy. And I think just... Having having my accident happen to me really did teach me how to be patient and take things day by day and just be appreciative of things. So I'm going to take this year as getting better and hope to do better than I could if and use this year to my advantage. Do the rest of you feel the same way in terms of having sort of an extra year to prepare? Yeah. yeah I, I feel like we're we're all pretty young. And so it's just another year to get stronger. That's how my coach has been saying it. And I agree. Like, I feel like it would be different if it was the end of my career, you know, like, you know, it's kind of nice that I'm so young. <laughs> Grace, for you, you've already been to the Olympics. So I'll ask, uh, what, what advice I do you have? I wanted to be this year. What's that? <laughs> I, I this season has been so great for me. Like my preseason, I was stronger, faster than before. And um, like I did so, I mean, we all did a lot of sacrifice. Like I moved. Um, so I'm from Puerto Rico. I went to Albany for school. 
then I stuck around there and help out with the track team and also train with my coach. 